don't. All right, everybody. I don't know. Let me know in the chat if you can see this or hear this, because uh, this is my first time giving this a shot. I thought I'd give something different than what I've been doing previously. Um, so I figured we'd go over the new book, the Saga of the Wolf, uh, the Saga of the Beast, sorry, um, with the new rules for both Space Wolves and Orcs. Uh, I wanted to do, I uh, usually do just a video of it, but I figured I'd try something different uh, this time and just uh, give it a shot. Um, so we're going to go over these, uh, over the rules that they have for these guys and everything else that we got new in here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to go over the fluff of it. I'm gonna, I usually just leave that to anyone who wants to read it and can uh, look it up themselves. But I figured what I'd do is I'd try something different, uh, go over the rules and, and, and kind of show you what you're going to get in here if you're an orc player or if you're a Space Wolves player, give you something new and show you what's going on with uh, these. So. Uh, first thing we're going to go into is we're going to go into the new Space Wolves uh, rules. Uh, I know the Space Wolves have been uh, severely hoping for something new here, uh, waiting for it with uh, everything that's been going on. Uh, they're one of the last of the uh, Space Marine chapters not to get their, their rules, so I'm sure they're super excited to be able to get them here. And um, I don't think they're going to be super disappointed. Um, I know that the rules that they, as you can, as you saw, the, the rules that they shared so far seem really cool. I think they've got some new abilities to get uh, to really be Beast in close combat, which is what the Space Wolves really want to do. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so, let's go into this. So, we're going over this, you can kind of see what they're going to have. Uh, again, they go over all the different stuff for uh, the Vanguard uh, units and everything like that. They also go over a new update. They update all of the rules for the, the weapons that got updated with the chapter, with the, uh, the new Space Marine Codex, and uh, basically giving them all the rules like Angels of Death. Shock, with Shock Assault, Nation Lone of Fear, and Bolter Discipline, uh, getting all of the abilities that all of the other Space Marines have, including Combat Doctrines. So, you're going to have access to those, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to lie, uh, the, the ability to have access to an additional minus one, super helpful with everything that we've got going on. So, it's good. It's some, some really good stuff, I think. Um, also, the, uh, the fact now that they change the way the doctrines work that you have to uh, keep moving along and can't just stay in the devastator doctrine i don't think it's going to affect the uh the space wolves quite as much as it does other armies like the iron hands or even the dark angels i think that they're going to have a cool uh, the ability for them to keep moving along they're going to want to be in uh, the uh, assault doctrine anyway getting them the ability to do that stuff so uh let's go into uh the the different uh, the different uh, data sheet sheets that they have here. Essentially, the wolf priests they gave them the litanies so that they have the abilities like the litanies like any other space marine chaplain does, uh, which is pretty cool. So you've got them with the terminator armor and the regular wolf priest. Uh, you also have the um, the data sheet for Ragnar Blackmane. Uh, he's got some really cool abilities. I mean, seven attacks and six wounds. Uh, he's going to be a beast in combat, and the fact that you now have uh, the ability to have plus three attacks uh, for shock assault instead of just one means that any time that he's charged, is charged, or uh, performs heroic intervention, he's going to be uh, swinging with ten attacks, which is incredible. He's got his four-up invul save, the Belt of Russ. Uh, most other people call that an Iron Halo, but <laughs> he's got the Belt of Russ. Um, you've got uh, the ability to reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by models in a friendly Space Wolf unit whilst they're within six inches. So he's got the usual captain abilities there. Um, he's got uh, the Angels of Death ability. Um, and the he's got uh, Battle Lust. If I went a friendly Space Wolf's unit within six inches of this model and not within three inches of an enemy unit consolidates, it can move up to six inches instead of three inches. So it allows him and all other Space Wolf units within six inches to, uh, within six inches to consolidate six inches instead of three inches. So if you slaughter the unit that you just got into and you um, put yourself in a position where you're not quite in range to be able to get back into combat uh, with a three inch consolidate, you now have six inches to consolidate. So it's gonna be harder for uh, your uh, opponent to keep you out of combat. It'll also be super helpful to be able to uh, sw uh, swarm your units around uh, the enemy units to uh, to wrap them into combat to protect them uh, from the next shooting phase since what you can do is if there's anyone alive there you surround them three point them and your opponent can't fall back unless they've got fly and then you're going to be protected from shooting your opponent's phase because they can't shoot the units that's been um, that's in combat and the idea is you, you then wrap them and then kill them and then you can uh, charge again on your turn so uh, so that's pretty cool I think that's super super strong the ability to to, to consolidate six inches 
really allows you to, to get those wraps uh, a little bit more um, assuredly than if you just did it normally. You've got Warhowl. Uh, you can reroll charge rolls made for friendly Space Wolves units other than vehicle units if they are within six inches of the unit when the roll is made. So rerolling charges for him and all the Space Wolf units. Super effective. I mean, um, one of the hardest things about getting into uh, with, with being a, a combat focused army is getting into combat. Uh, and anything like this that allows you to reroll charges makes a big difference. As a Gene Silico player, let me tell you, having those abilities and those powers that allow you to um, that just allow you to reroll charges makes a huge, huge difference. So I highly suggest, uh, you know, I, I think that's going to be a super, uh, perhaps underrated power that I think is going to come into effect and become super beneficial to allow him and his friends to be able to charge into combat. Um, then you've got also all the, the Primaris stuff here. So you got the, the Wolf Lord and Phobos armor, the Wolf Priest, Primaris Wolf Priest, Primaris Battle Leader, um, Room Priest in Phobos armor. You've got Intercessors. Uh, the Intercessors did update here so that you've got the uh, you've got access with the uh, the pack leader to have a chain sword, power fist, power sword, or thunder hammer. Uh, so you've got all of the all the abilities there, so you can run around smacking things with the power hammers, which uh, thunder hammers, which is pretty cool. Um, you got infiltrators and cursors, uh, all all of the stuff. So basically, you just got uh, uh, all of the, the the data slates for the. Uh, Primera stuff that came out uh, since the Codex did. So now we're going to get into their new rules that they have here. Uh, so we've got um, essentially they've got uh, the the Defenders of Humanity, which is uh, objective secured for troop choices, and then we've got Savage Fury. Uh, whilst the Assault Doctrine is active, an unmodified hit roll of six. Uh, is made for an attack made with a melee weapon by a unit with this ability. That attack scores one additional hit on the target. So essentially, now every six that you hit uh, during the uh, every six that you hit during the um, during the assault doctrine during combat is going to count as uh, two hits instead of one. So for every six swings that you're making there, on average, hitting on threes or hitting on twos if you charge, uh, because your hunter's unleashed, you still have the plus one to hit. So hitting on twos. You're looking for every seven that you've got going on there. You're looking uh, at what is that? Six. You're looking at six hits for every uh, six attacks on average uh, with that because you have the one that you miss. And if you've got a warlord around that uh, you can reroll ones, you're looking at seven hits for every six attacks that you have. That's pretty good. You know, um, I know that the the um, getting the uh, the savage echoes from the blood angels was pretty cool. Having the extra attack in there. And, uh, I, I, you know, I think there are certain situations when that extra attack will be, uh, you know, can be good. But, I mean, it's like anything else that you have there. If you get that extra attack, you could miss it. But if you hit on sixes, you could roll, technically, you could roll six sixes. And then you would have 12 hits for six attacks, which is pretty incredible. So, uh, the high end for, I think, on average, the plus one attack, I think, averages out to be more on average. But uh, in certain situations, the high end for uh, for Savage Fury is certainly higher than that of the um, the Savage Echoes. So I think that's uh, I think that's super cool. I think there are going to be certain situations when that's just going to be just unbelievable the number of sixes that you're going to have here. Uh, hey, Raul, the the Intercessors do have the option for Thunder Hammer and Power Fist. Uh, they gave them all the options uh, before. I kind of showed that before. I think. I mean, you may have jumped in afterwards, but they do have access to the uh, the power fist and the thunder hammers, um, and also power sword and chain sword. So you've got all the access, the same intercessor access uh, for powers with the sergeants that everyone else does. So, um, so it should be pretty cool. Um, let's go into hunters unleashed. So this is the the chapter tactic. Uh, in any turn in which a unit with this ability um, made a charge move, was charged, or performed heroic intervention, so the same things as they had before. Uh, you can add one to its hit rolls for the fight phase. Uh, so, you know, again, just like you had previously. Um, and in addition, characters with this ability can perform a heroic intervention if, after the enemy has completed their char uh, all their charge moves, there are, any, there are any enemy units within six inches of them. They can move up to six inches when performing heroic intervention, uh, so long as they end the move closer to the nearest enemy unit. So six inch uh, heroic intervention for characters, which is pretty awesome, and the, uh, and the plus one to hit. So, uh, again, I think this is going to be pretty awesome. Um, you know, the plus one to hit, it, it, it's not necessarily going to be the, um, uh, the, the it, you know, if you're, if you're just swinging with a regular power sword uh, with, your, or with your 
with your captains hitting on twos anyway, it's not going to become as big a deal. But if you're going to be throwing in with, you know, Thunder Hammers on, you know, on Wolfen with Thunder Hammers, or you've got Thunderwolf Cavalry with Thunder Hammers, or you've got Intercessor Sergeants with Thunder Hammers, um, you know, getting the ability to ignore that minus one to hit is makes a big difference. Um, and even anything that's not, uh, you know, a special character essentially is going to be hitting on uh, is going to be hitting on twos, which is pretty awesome. So uh, I think this is going to be I think this is going to be super cool once you guys get into combat. And uh, I mean, six inch, uh, cons uh, you know, consolidate there is, is always awesome too. Um, so they've got they gave you the Vanguard Warlord traits. These are the same ones that everyone gets. Um, essentially, it's just uh, the 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 Phobos guys can have access to their to the warlord traits that they got with the with the vanguard stuff that came out but now let's go over the space wolf stratagems so you've got duty eternal which is the same thing um you know you have a space wolf dreadnought um it's, it says again uh have the damage but i'm sure that's going to be faq just like it got faq for every other uh space wolf uh, for every other space marine there giving them uh so it's just gonna be minus one you've got veteran intercessors which is always fun adding the attack and the leadership especially with all the abilities that they have here um, and then you have, uh, the bolt storm, which is again, intercessors, uh, from your unit, uh, uh, shooting phase, select an intercessor unit from your army at the end of the phase, um, auto bolt rifles that model until the end of the phase, auto bolt rifles. So it's the same things that they have in the regular ones. So it becomes auto bolt rifles are, um, when you solve the attack made with this weapon against a target within half range, uh, do not make a hit roll, it automatically hits. So, uh, auto hits for, um, auto bolt rifles with this for bolt storm for two CP. Rapid fire um, becomes uh, rapid fire two um, for two CP. So it's basically the ones that they had from the from the regular Space Marines and all the other ones have had. Um, so um, yeah, I don't know why the the focus keeps jumping on this thing. It's not. Is it because it's I don't know. Is it not enough light? I don't know what's going on over here. Um, yeah, thank thank you, Anne. I I know I know it's been jumping in and out. I don't know why, but. Um, Hopefully it'll it'll calm down. Maybe throw some extra light. I don't even know. Uh, so then we've got uh, they've got Hammer of Wrath, which is which is kind of cool. Use the stratagem in your charge phase when a jump pack unit from your army finishes a charge move. For each model in that unit, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of that model and roll one d6 on a five plus. The enemy suffers one mortal wound. I mean, it, it, in theory, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I just I just think that uh, it would be better if we could um, if if it was a little bit more assured than just. Like a you know, if it was more assured than than um, than no, oh, that light is sucks. We're gonna take that off. Um, the if the if the if it didn't have that same if it wasn't on a five plus maybe if it was on a four plus or a three plus, but for one CP doing one mortal wound, uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem super uh, super great to me, but hopefully we'll figure that out. I think I think I, you know I think there's ways to make this work, um, but I don't know. It 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 really comes down to it if you really need that one extra. Uh, mortal wound in there maybe if you have the cp to use it but uh then you've got um big guns never tires the same thing all of the ones rapid fire veteran intercessors in here of the chapter gives you the extra warlord trait um for all that fun stuff then you got uh fury of the champions use the stratagem in, uh, in any phase select uh one space wolf terminator for unit from your army until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made by a model in the unit add one to hit roll so fury of the champions is the same is like fury of the first um, essentially it allows you to, um, it allows you to just get plus one to hit for your, uh, for your terminators, which I think is still pretty cool. Um, then we've got knowledge of the foe. That's the one that they previewed for zero CP that if, uh, you kill an enemy character, you can get back as uh, a command point, which is pretty cool for zero CP. Uh, it just gives you the extra chance to be able to, uh, gives you the better, uh, an extra chance to get back CP during the game, which is always helpful. So you can either try to save it, save yourself from having to spend it. On a relic or something like that, but now having the ability to just do that, which is kind of cool. Uh, one CP for counter charge. Use the strategy in your opponent's charge phase. Select one space wolf unit from your army. Until the end of that phase, that unit can perform a heroic intervention as if it were a character. Uh, in addition, it can perform a heroic intervention if there are any enemy units within six inches of it instead of three, and when uh, doing so, can move up to six inches instead of three, uh, which is pretty cool. It'll, it'll it just you know it it just makes it so that your opponent can't keep your combat units out of combat as much as as possible being able to consolidate with a thunderwolf cavalry unit or a wolfen unit 
uh, six inches is, is uh, or heroic alien interven uh, intervention six inches means that uh, your opponent's really going to have to work on their placement when they charge into you or even just move away from you, you know, because at this point, um, they, uh, if you're in combat with someone and they fall back, an average unit can only move six inches. So that means that you're going to be six inches from them and you can move back into the into combat with them. It's going to be very difficult for them to be able to uh, get out of combat with you when you can just spend one CP and then counter charge back in on their during their charge phase. Sure, they can shoot at you during the shooting phase, but, you know, I think that's going to become super helpful in keeping your wolves in combat, which is where they want to be. Um, and it's going to be heroic intervention, which means that it keys off all the all the abilities that usually have problems because uh, just just uh, consolidating into a unit doesn't give you the you know the the two plus two um, the plus one to hit or anything like that. But a heroic inter intervention does. So um, it's almost even help helpful if they fall back out of combat as long as you don't take too much damage in the shooting phase to be able to then spend one CP heroically intervene and now you're having plus one to hit and um, and all that fun stuff. So I think this is going to be pretty cool. Uh, you got Crushing Assault. Use the strategy in your charge phase when a Thunderwolf Cavalry unit from your army finishes a charge move. Uh, for each model in that unit, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of the model and roll 1d6. On a 2+, plus, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. So again, where a Jump Pack unit is spending one CP for a 5+, plus for a mortal wound, Thunderwolf Cavalry for one CP um, is, is spending one CP for a 2+, plus to cause a mortal wound. And on top of that, it's each model in that unit can select one enemy unit within one inch of the uh, of that model and roll one. So for each model in that unit, they're choosing an enemy unit. So if you charge in with six, you have the possibility on six two pluses. So uh, on average, if you have a, a six, if you have a six man unit that uh, of Thunderwolf cavalry, um, they charge in into that into uh, a unit. If they are all within one inch. You roll. You spend one CP. On average, you're doing five mortal wounds before you even attack. So then you start swinging in with your plus one to hit thunder hammers, and you're just going to destroy things. I mean, that's pretty crazy. You know, you charge into a knight just doing five, uh, you know, doing five mortal wounds right off the bat before you even swing on them. That's going to be great. I think this is going to be super effective. I like crushing assault. I think that's going to do some good stuff there, uh, for one CP especially. I think thunder wolves are are going to be pretty pretty awesome with the other stuff that you've got going on here. You got Touch of the Wild here. Use this one CP. Use the stratagem in the fight phase. Select one Space Wolves character model in your army to the end of the phase when resolving an attack made with that model. An unmodified hit roll of four plus scores one additional hit. So if you have Ragnar, you top this on. You, you spend one CP on top of that. He's charges in. He's got ten attacks that he's swinging in there. Every four plus, so half of those are going to be um, are going to be give him an additional hit. So he's hitting on twos. Right, so you have ten attacks in. You're hitting on twos. You're looking at approximately what is that? Uh, eight out of those. If you're going on the conservative side, nine, eight to nine hits. Half of those, so an additional uh, five of those are going to be um, on average are going to give you plus one attack, uh, plus one hit for this, and then every six is going to give you an additional plus one, uh, plus one hit. So all of a sudden now you've got him going in there with ten attacks. He's looking at approximately, what, 14, 15, like 16 hits conservatively with that. Um, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Just Even just spending one CP on him over there, all of a sudden he's charging in and getting 16 hits on 10 attacks. That's pretty awesome. I think that's going to be super sweet. And it works for any Space Wolves character. So if you've got, you know, a Wolf Lord on a, th on a Thunder Wolf. Uh, going out there with his with uh, with all of his abilities, uh, this could really do some super serious damage because you know space wolf characters get get hit get attacks and and this is going to be giving you um, you know double hits on uh, double hits on on four so it's not even a, a nether attack so it's not like you know death to the false emperor where you have if you get a six you get another attack this is on fours uh, you get just a, um, on fours and sixes if you if you've got the um, if it's the the assault doctrine. You're looking at um, just getting two hits, which is pretty awesome. So, um, so you've got that going on, and then we've got uh, vicious executioners. Uh, use the strategy in the fight phase when a wolf guard unit from your army is chosen to fight with. Till the end of the phase, uh, when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit against an infantry unit, an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any other damage. Um, 
so I think that's pretty cool. One CP on sixes. There's a lot of things. I always feel uh, whenever I have the thing where you have to hit on sixes to cause a certain thing, it, 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 um, I'm not as super uh, excited about using that. Uh, maybe it's because I don't roll a lot of sixes. <laughs> um, but uh, for one CP, I, I could definitely see that being worth it, especially if you really, really want to take out a unit. Um, but at the same time, I, I just, I just think that there's, there may be some other things that you could use better than that. But still, pretty cool. Um, uh, but again, it's on sixes to hit. I don't know. Uh, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's fine. Uh, one CP for pack hunters. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when a Fenrisian wolves or cyber wolves unit from your army is chosen to fight with. Until the end of the phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit, if that unit is within three inches of a friendly Space Wolves infantry unit or Space Wolves cavalry unit, you can reroll the hit roll. For one CP, rerolling hit rolls is super good. I like that a lot. Um, you're rerolling everything for them. So if you have a big old pack, a big old swarm of Fenrisian wolves or cyber wolves, you could really just overwhelm units, um, getting get the reroll there. As long as they charge in with an infantry or cavalry. So you just have them running along with a bunch of Thunderwolf cavalry. I think you got some good stuff that you're going to be able to do there. Um, then you've got 1 CP for Storm Strike. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a Storm uh, Stormfang gunship model in your army is chosen to shoot with. Till the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a Hellfrost Destructor by that model, add 1 to the hit roll, wound, and damage rolls. So the 1 to the hit, wound, and damage rolls. That's pretty cool for 1 CP. You know, those things can do some serious damage. So having that um, for 1 CP, essentially the 1 CP that you would roll to re-roll a hit, you can now add 1 to uh, the hit, wound, and damage rolls. So I like that a lot. I think that's I think that can be super effective. Especially if he's super if he's already um, if he's if he's not injured, you know what I mean? Or you could just use it if you really need that hit to get that plus one to hit, um, you know, to roll there. So I like it. Uh, then you've got Gene Rot Might. Uh, use this strategy in the fight phase when a Primaris infantry unit from your army is chosen to fight with until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in that unit. An unmodified hit roll of six automatically scores a hit and successfully wounds the target. Do not make a wound roll. If that unit is benefiting from the Savage Fury ability, the additional hit successfully wounds the target. Do not make a wound roll. So that's pretty cool. Uh, for one CP, they get, uh, you know, if you roll a six, you get two wounds, essentially. You don't even have to, you're, you're not even hit just uh, straight up hits. I think that's pretty, that's pretty cool for one CP. Um, I can see that being awesome for like a, a big squad of aggressors or a big squad of intercessors rolling up in there. Um, getting all those additional hits and additional wounds, I think that's going to be. I think that's going to be super cool for one CP, uh, especially a big unit because it doesn't specify the size. So if you've got like a ten man intercessor unit or a six man aggressor unit, I think that's when those are going to really, really come in handy. Um, then you've got uh, three CP for target sighted. Uh, that's the same one where they have as intercessors with stalker bolters can uh, target characters. Pretty cool. Uh, just like, I mean, I liked it in all the other Space Marine stuff, so I can see it being cool for these guys. Hunter Slayer Missile, um, if a Repulsor, this is the one with a Repulsor, um, can uh, launch a Hunter Slayer Missile, uh, select one enemy v uh, vehicle unit or monster unit within 40 inches of the model, and is not within one inch of any unit from your army. Roll 1d6. Uh, if the result is equal to or greater than the model's ballistic skill, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Each Repulsor model can only be selected for the Saturn once per battle. Uh, all the other Space Marines got it too. Um, for one CP, doing D three mortal wounds on a hit, it's basically it's basically like uh, um, what is it? Hellfire bolts for uh, for the for the heavy bolters that you have there, where you can you know spend one CP, you make one attack, and then it does D three mortal wounds. Except you can also shoot everything else, so um, you can just select one to shoot them under slayer missile, which is pretty cool. Uh, two CP, you've got skilled riders. Uh, use this stratagem in your movement phase. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, use this stratagem in your movement phase. Select one Space Wolves biker unit or Space Wolves land speeder unit from your army. If that unit moves that if that unit moves that phase, that then models in that unit have a four plus invulnerable save um, uh, against uh, attacks made with ranged weapons until the start of the next movement phase. If that unit advances that phase, models in that unit instead have a three plus invulnerable save against attacks made with ranged weapons until the start of your next movement phase. So for two CP, you get a better form of jink that the that the Dark Angels get. Granted, Dark Angels just get it on their bikes and stuff um, innately, but at the same time, having the ability there uh, to spend two CP to keep that unit alive, it comes in super handy. I'm not gonna lie, having uh, the ability to just um, to get uh, invul saves from just uh, moving, you get a four plus, which is what jink does, and if you advance, you get a three plus. I mean, it makes a big difference, especially if you're going up against you know another Marine unit that a uh, Marine force that is in a doctrine that's really gonna hurt you. 
um i mean it's just i think that's i think it's pretty good for two cp um and just getting wool uh, space wolf bikers and, and and land speeders where they need to be and keep them there so <laughs> uh then you've got one cp for death grip bite uh use the strategy in the fight phase when a thunderwolf cavalry unit from your army is chosen to fight with till the end of the phase crushing teeth and claw weapons models in that unit are equipped with have a damage characteristic of two that's pretty good um you know just having the ability to have two damage is uh super helpful against uh primaris models against pretty much everything you've got there so having the ability to do that i think is going to be super uh super effective and, and good so highly recommend that one um especially if you combine that with all the other abilities that, that thunderwolf cavalry are going to get i think you can do some uh serious damage with thunderwolf cavalry which is really awesome which is i, I like that the psychic awakening uh books that they have that they've been coming out with for the uh, the non-codex uh, uh, adherent chapters have been uh, emphasizing the 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 special units from that army. So for the Dark Angels, for instance, we got uh, a bunch of abilities for Ravenwing and Deathwing. Uh, for the uh, Blood Angels with uh, the Ball, uh, there was a lot of powers there that helped with Death Company and uh, helped with the Sanguinary Guard. Um, I like that they're emphasizing those specific the 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 chapter specific units in the abilities that they get in these. I think it's I think it really helps with the flavor for the for the the chapters themselves and also those are usually the the units that that just that drew people to those those chapters. Like the reason that, you know, the a lot of reason that you might want to be a space wolf player as opposed to say an ultramarines player is that you want to ride a giant giant wolf with teeth and claws to go and, and tear your opponent apart because that's fun. That's exactly what you want to be doing. Um, so I think that the fact that they emphasize a lot of these specific characters is, is good. I like it a lot. Uh, then we've got uh, one CP for steady advance. Use the strategy in your shooting phase when a space wolf infantry unit from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of the phase for the purposes of bolter discipline. I think a lot of the space marine uh, player uh, uh, armies got that one. So basically just uh, you can you get the bolter discipline ability even if you move. Um, so you can move up your like a I think it would be most effective if you use it on like a, a 10 man in intercessor squad that you moved up um, and then you could just shoot rapid fire with the with the rapid fire bolters. I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, then you've got transhuman physiology, uh, which is the same thing that all space marines have gotten. Um, one, two, one, one through three always fails, irrespective. Unmodified wound rolls of one through three always fail. Then you've got one CP for Skyfire. Use the strategy in your shooting phase when a hunter or stalker model from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of the phase when that model can only uh, that model can only target units that can fly. When resolving an attack made by that model, add one to the hit roll and wound rolls, uh, and on unmodified wound rolls of a six, double the damage inflicted. So that's pretty cool, especially if you're going against uh, sp uh, flyer spam. So if you're going up against Eldar with a whole bunch of flyers, I think that would be a super effective ability to to use that if you want to be running your hunters or stalkers. Um, I think it'd be good stuff. And then you got Vengeance of the Machine Spirit, uh, essentially uh, Land Raider, Repulsor, uh, Storm Raven Gunship, uh, Storm Wolf model or Storm Fang model. Um, it basically allows you um, that model can either automatically explode uh, when they um, essentially it's when they're destroyed. That model can either automatically explode. Do not roll the d6. Shoot with one of its ranged weapons as if it was your shooting phase, or make one attack with one of its melee weapons as if it were the fight phase. Uh, use the top row of the model's damage table when shooting with that ranged weapon or resolving that attack with a melee weapon. Um, auto explode for two CP is always is always fun. I mean, it's the kind of thing that you sit there and it's like I just need to just if your you know your opponent just swarmed your your land raider or you shot your your you know your your storm raven or your storm fang into your opponent's uh, uh, side of the table and then they just shot it down. You could just auto explode. I think it'd be kind of fun to be able to run up there drop your units out of your storm fang and then just have them right in front of like a tau gun line or something like that and just have it explode do a whole bunch of mortal wounds because mortal wounds can't get passed off to uh from that can't be passed off to um the drones so that's a good way to get around that for tau so that's pretty cool uh so they got the obscuration abilities so that's going to be the psychic powers for uh the the um for space wolf obs uh obscure obscuration that's the one the space wolf ones for uh the phobos guys here um so that should be kind of cool and then you got litanies of battle so it's all the same usual litanies and then your special uh space wolf litany is if this litany is inspiring select one friendly space wolf unit within six inches of this model 
when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in that unit against a monster or vehicle unit, add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon in that attack. That's pretty cool. I think you just pop that onto like a, a wolfin with thunder with uh, thunder hammers, and all of a sudden, if they're attacking a monster or a vehicle, those thunder hammers are doing four damage a piece. That's pretty brutal. I think that could be super effective and super cool. So, uh, highly recommend. I mean, that, I think that could be super awesome. So you have them up there with a wolf priest. Uh, pop that out there, and now all of a sudden, all those thunder hammers in that unit are doing four damage, which I think is uh, always super cool. Um. So going along, and all the other litanies are the same as the, all the other Space Marines have had, uh, so nothing uh, special or new there. Uh, going over the relics here, you've got uh, the Mountain Breaker Helm. It's an infantry character only. After you have resolved the bear's attacks in the fight phase, but before they consolidate, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of the bear. Roll 1d6. On a 2+, plus, the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. If this ability destroys an enemy character and the bearer is your warlord, treat the bearer as having performed their deed of legend. So that's pretty cool. You can pop the the deed of legend if you have a if you have a um, a space wolf uh, uh, warlord trait. It's hard to get that deed of legend. Uh, you could just put this guy this on him, and then he can pop it by killing a character with D three mortal wounds at the end of the um, um, after he. Uh, after you resolve the bear's attacks in the fight phase. So it's, you basically, uh, when he has it on him, they're going to be attacking, doing all their damage, plus on a 2 plus D3 um, mortal wounds. So, I mean, that's super effective. Again, once again, the, the Space Wolves have the ability to just be like absolute monsters in, in, close, in, in close combat, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, then you got Talisman of Storms. Uh, Rune Priest only. After resolving the first psychic power of the bearer in your psychic phase, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 12 inches of the bearer. On a 4+, plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. So, I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, so roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 12 inches of the bearer. So now, all of a sudden, every enemy unit within 12 inches of your, of your, um, uh, of your uh, Rune Priest is going to be taking on a four plus. They suffer a mortal wound for every psychic power that they do after reserve. Uh, well, I mean af after the first one per turn. But at the same time, that's each turn, each each time there's with units within twelve inches of them, they're going to be suffering uh, a mortal wound on a four plus. So makes your makes your uh, room priests even better than they uh, had been previously, which I think is pretty cool. Then you've got uh, Worm Splitter. Uh, it's model with a power axe only. Relic replaces the power axe as the following pro following profile. Uh, strength plus one, AP minus two, two damage. Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon against a monster or vehicle, this weapon has a damage characteristic of four for that attack. Um, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> no unwieldy there, doing four damage at AP minus two. Uh, pretty good against vehicles and monsters. I mean, there's plenty of vehicles and monsters out there. Um, and I guess especially if you're going to be going hunting down uh, Gazgul, <laughs> that'll be super helpful there. Uh, then you've got Storm Song, which is a model uh, equipped with a Mastercrafted Stalker Bolt Rifle only. The Relic replaces the Mastercrafted Stalker Bolt Rifle with the following profile. Heavy 1, Strength 6, AP minus 3, 3 damage, and you can target characters, which is pretty cool. So it basically makes uh, their um, their Mastercrafted Stalker Bolt Rifle into um, into a sniper rifle. I like that a lot. I think that could be super effective on a, uh, on a Primaris Lieutenant, or not Primaris Lieutenant, but a Primaris Battle Leader. I think that could be super effective. Um, then you've got Word Bane, a Weird Bane, um, a model equipped with a rune sword only, runic sword only. This relic replaces the runic sword and has the following profile: uh, strength plus one, AP minus four, D three damage. Already pretty pretty baller. When you're solving an attack made with this weapon, you can reroll the wound roll, which is always super effective, uh, super helpful. And in addition, if the target of that attack is a psyker, this weapon has a damage characteristic of three for that attack. Whew. Three damage if you're attacking into psychers with it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, then you've got Adam Anytime Mantle, which is just a uh, five plus um, uh, feel no pain. You've got Runic Armor, a model with this relic has a two plus five plus invul two plus armor five plus invul save. Uh, then you've got Morkai's Teeth Bolts. Uh, when you give this model this relic, select one bolt weapon that model is armed with. When the model is chosen to shoot with, you can choose for the weapon to fire a Morkai's Teeth Bolt. Uh, if you do, you can only make one attack with that weapon, but if it uh, if a hit is scored, the target unit suffers one mortal wound, and that unit is marked by Morkai until the end of the turn. 
When resolving an attack against a unit that is marked with Morkai, reroll a wound roll of one. Uh, pretty good. I like that. Uh, you can have that. Basically, it just allows you to choose a unit that you want to have reroll wounds to uh, reroll wound rolls of one uh, to go in there. And it don't, uh, if if it hits, you get a mortal wound, so you don't even have to worry about. It. So you can ch target like a knight or something like that, something with a, a, a toughness eight that a lot of your other stuff might have uh, trouble wounding. Uh, and you th and you shoot that into them, do that mortal wound, and all of a sudden they get to reroll ones to wound, which is pretty good. I like that a lot. Uh, then you've got uh, Mastercrafted Weapon. Uh, uh, when you give a model this relic, select one weapon the model is equipped with. Uh, this cannot uh, this cannot be a weapon whose profile includes the word Mastercrafted. Add one to the damage characters of the weapon. That weapon is considered to be a relic of the Fang. So pretty cool. Uh, digital weapons. When a model in this uh, with this relic fights, it can make one additional attack using the close combat weapon profile. Uh, when resolving an attack, if a hit uh, if a hit is scored, the target suffers one mortal wound, and the attack sequence ends. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, I mean, I think uh, Space Marines have all got these. And you got Companions Blade. This is an interesting one. Uh, model with Power Sword or Master Crafted Power Sword only. This relic replaces those. Uh, makes it Strength plus two, AP minus three, two damage. Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon, if the bear is within three inches of another friendly Space Wolves character unit, you can reroll the wound roll. So that's kind of cool if you're running around with a bunch of characters together, uh, getting to reroll wound rolls uh, with your power sword that is now strength plus two. Uh, so you're looking at an average strength six with those guys. That's not bad. I like that a lot. And two damage a pop is just always fun. Um, and then you've got Wolf Tail Talisman. Uh, when a psychic, uh, psychic test is taken for an enemy model within 18 inches of a model from your army, with the relic, subtract two from the result. So minus two to psychic test, that's pretty cool. I like that one, especially if uh, you're going up against like Grey Knights or something like that. All of a sudden, now their their uh, their smites are going to be uh, reduced, and now they're not going to have the ability to to really beat you as hard as they've been uh, as as they've been beating a lot of other Space Marines. Uh, so I like that a lot. I think that's going to be super effective, um, especially um, competitively when you're going to be seeing a lot of Grey Knights or, or a Thousand Suns or something like that. Um, you've got the ability to do that. So if the Thousand Suns come back to uh, try to get um, revenge for Prospero, uh, you can tell them no thank you. <laughs> uh, then they've got all of the points values for all the different stuff over here, um, which is which is uh, pretty good. Um, so Ragnar Blackmane there is 120 points, which is, I think, super good for... Uh, for what he's got going on uh, with him there. So I like that one a lot. I think this is going to be pretty good. And then you've got the Space Wolves name generator. Uh, so we're going to go with, uh, I'm going to be uh, Lars Ice Grip. <laughs> I like that one. Lars Ice Grip. Um, cool. So that's the Space Wolves. Now let's go check out the Orcs. Um, I think they got some cool stuff. I really super love the new, um, the new Gazgul sculpt. The model is just fantastic. I like it a lot. I think it's I think it's gonna be awesome to see him on the table, just uh, crumping crumping some gits. Uh, so you've got Gazgol with all of his uh, specialness over here. He's gonna have twelve wounds, uh, but again, he um, only uh, can move uh, lose a maximum of four per round, which is or per phase, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we go over stuff. We've got here we go. Ma rule. Daka daka daka. Uh, the Great Wa friendly orc infantry units within six inches of this model can be chosen to charge with, even if they advance this turn. In addition, add one to uh, the attacks characteristics of models in friendly orc infantry units. Also, units within six inches of this model. If the unit made a charge move this turn, uh, so that's pretty cool. Plus one attack and plus uh, and um, can ch uh, charge even if they uh, advance. This is the the usual stuff that. Um, uh, the, the the being able to charge even though they attack that's what a, the war boss does but um, the plus one attack is pretty good and also I mean it does have infantry so he does not have the infantry character keyword or infantry keyword so um, I imagine I would I could I would I would imagine that this is going to be uh, a, a change to include him uh, when they come out with the FAQ for it but I mean if not yeah he doesn't get the benefit of that so because uh, what's his movement uh, his movement starts at seven inches, then goes six to five. Uh, but his attacks go from five to six to seven, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's it's uh, sort of like if anyone's ever played uh, Hero Clicks with Hulk, uh, that's what always the Hulk Hero Clicks always used to do. Is like as they got more and more wounded, uh, they got like stronger and stronger and stronger until they died, <laughs> which is essentially what um, Gazgul's doing here. And his strength goes from his strength goes down, but his attacks go up. 
as he goes down. But his weapon skill does not uh, change. Weapon skill or ballistic skill does not change. They're staying up there at a 2 plus weapon skill, 5 plus ballistic skill. And then we got the bosses watching. When a friendly orc unit within 6 inches of this model fails a morale test, this model can restore order in a brutal display of violence. It does so. Uh, the, if it does, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, and that model, uh, the morale test is treated as having been passed. Um, just like most, I think, war bosses have that ability. Then you get Prophet of uh, Gork and Mork. This model has a 4 plus invul save. In addition, this model can only lose a maximum of 4 wounds in each phase. That's going to be keeping him alive, which is pretty awesome. And then uh, Goffs is the best. Uh, Reroll hit rolls of 1 for attacks made with this me uh, with uh, melee weapons by models in friendly Goff orc units. Uh, whilst that unit is within six inches of this model, so rerolling uh, one uh, ones in the fight phase, uh, which is which is pretty cool for, but only for goths. So essentially, it's like the same thing with Gilliman, where there, he has certain units, uh, certain abilities that affect orc infantry, and certain ones that only affect uh, goth uh, orcs. Whereas Gilliman had you know some that affect imperial imperium units, and then some that affect only ultramarines. Uh, then you've got Grand War Boss. This model can be uh, can be included in an orc detachment without preventing other units from that detachment from gaining a clan culture. Note, however, that this model does not benefit from any clan culture unless the clan culture selected for that detachment is the Goths clan culture. So, pretty cool there. Then you've got Makari down here doing all of his fun stuff. Um, so uh, his attack there, Makari. Oh, so let's go over Mork's Roar and uh, Gork's Claw. And then you got stick bombs, but it's uh, his his gun is assault twelve at thirty six inch range, uh, strength five, AP minus one, one damage, pretty good. And then Mork's claw, strength times two, so his strength is a minimum of ten with this, um, and a maximum of fourteen, which is pretty cool. Uh, AP minus four and four damage. Whew, he's gonna crump some gits, that's for sure. Um, I, I think that's gonna be. Su I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna be super effective. I think the fact that. Um, you have to focus on him to kill him, and the fact that he's going to take so many rounds to try to kill him is going to be uh, super effective. You know, getting up the board, you, you see, you still see, you know, um, what is it? The the swarm lord uh, in, with Tyranid still gets used a lot because of the abilities that he has, um, and he doesn't have the same kind of only four per phase. So you could just like unload all your shooting into him and kill him right off the bat. Whereas um, Gazgul is going to require, you're going to take four wounds from him. So even one last gun shot is not, you, you can't even do the maximum that last uh, cannon, cannon, not gun, <laughs> last cannon shot to hit in there. And he's tough seven, so he's still difficult to, to, to really uh, kill in the in the fighting and the, and the uh, shooting phase. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be super effective. I like him a lot for what he can do. Um, then we've got, uh, yeah, so let's go back and down into Makari here. So we've got uh, his Makari Stabba. Strength uh, user, AP 0, 1 damage. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, a wound roll of 6 plus and fix, inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends. So he just gets to, uh, so if he has a wound roll of a 6 plus, boop, D3 mortal wounds instead of uh, the regular 1 damage there. So, um, and he's got 2 attacks, so you got you got a chance. So what is that? Uh, you're going to do that essentially, and he's got a weapon skill of 4 plus. So one in every six rounds, so once per game apparently, <laughs> if, on average, if he's got him in there. Um, so that's some good stuff there. And then we've got um, Gazgul's uh, Wa Banner. When a model in a friendly Goth Orc unit within six inches of this model would lose a wound, and this model is within three inches of a friendly Gazgul Thraka unit, uh, roll 1d6 on a six plus, that wound is not lost. So six plus, feel no pain um, for Goth uh, models when a goth model and a friendly goth unit within six... Oh, so it's the units within six inches of Makari. They get a, uh, a six plus feel no pain as long as he's within three inches of Gazgul. So that's pretty cool. Oh, and he's two... They're two separate... Um, uh, Makari is a single model equipped with Makari Stabber. Only one of this model can be including your army. They're two separate data sheets here. So he can be taken separately from Gazgul if you want. You could just run him as a leader of like a... Of a uh, Gretchen Force, or you can just take Gazgul without taking Makari, and they don't have to worry about holding each other back with their movement or anything, because he's got, um, what's his movement here? Movement 5 inches, so at first, Gazgul's going to be running past him, but then he can probably keep catch up to him, which is pretty cool. Oh no, whoop, whoop, never mind. They got that. I, I spoke too soon. <laughs> so we've got Accidental Figurehead. Friendly Goff Gretchen units can use this model's leadership instead of their own whilst they're within 12 inches of this model. 
And then you got Suspicious Lucky. Uh, model has a 2 plus invul save. And keep up. At the start of your movement phase, if this model is within 3 inches of friendly Gazgul Thraka unit, add 2 inches to the model's move characteristic until the end of the phase. So, I misspoke. He can keep up with Gazgul Thraka, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but he doesn't have to, which is which is, which is is kind of interesting. You know, as opposed to a lot of the other things like um, the Helm Bearer for, for Asriel or, or um, the Watchers of the Dark. I know a lot of Dark Angels ones, but there's like a lot of the little, little, little guys that run around he gets to do it wherever he wants it which is pretty fun he can also be used to try to block people from trying to sweep um to try to wrap around uh gasgul too you can keep him there because they can't move within uh three inches or can't move within an inch of him to try to charge in which is cool unless they declare it uh then you've got big mech with custom force field so no worries about that going into legends here it is you've got it right there um and they got the points for everything there gasgul is 285 points and Makari is 65 points. So, pretty cool. I like this. I like them, what they got there. Let's go over the stratagems that they've got here. So, we've got one CP for custom job. Use the stratagem before your battle. Your army can have one additional custom job, uh, which we'll get to in a second. All the custom jobs that you include um, must be a different and be given to different units. And then you've got the cleverest boss. Use the stratagem before the battle. Select one big mech model in your army. Add one to the model's wounds and attacks characteristics and change its weapon skill to 2+. plus. You can only use this stratagem once per battle, and only if your army does not include mech boss Buzzgob. Um, so for 1 CP, you can turn your big, uh, your big mech, uh, or your big mech into like a super big mech, which is pretty cool. Uh, 1 CP for Grot Bumper. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, use this stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase. When an attack made with a ranged weapon successfully wounds a Boom Daka Snaz Wagon model in your army. The saving throw is automatically passed. Do not roll. Um, each unit uh, only uh, can only benefit from the stratagem once per battle. So essentially what happens is uh, you get shot with uh, from an opponent and then the the grot that's tied to the front bumper uh, takes the shot, which is pretty cool. Um, which is, I, th I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Super orky and pretty awesome. Um, so I like that a lot. Um, then you've got uh, his. You've got temp, uh, temperamental shock drive. Uh, use the strategy in your shooting phase. After shooting with a shock jump dragsta on a unit in your army, that unit immediately advances, and the result is a four plus. Do not roll. Because um, when they advance, they uh, if they roll a four plus on the advance roll, they get to basically just deep strike nine inches away. Uh, they get to be taken off the table and then uh, set back on the table nine inches away from uh, enemy units. So. Uh, that's pretty cool. So you get to uh, you get to shoot and then just replace yourself wherever you want to, uh, which is which is always fun with the shock jump dragsters. And then you got the biggest boss, which I think is probably the same thing as uh, similar to the cleverest boss. Uh, so the biggest boss is use this strategy before the battle. Select one war boss model in your army. Add one to that model's wounds and attack characteristic, and it gains a four plus invul save. Uh, you can only use this strategy once per battle, and only if your army does not include Gazgul Thraka, because he would crump that git before he got out there. <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, so, you know, you have the ability, now you have Gazgul Thraka, who's going to be a, a super beast, uh, literally. Um, and then you've got um, the ability to really bump up your, your HQs, which I think is which is which I think is fun and cool. Then you got uh, one CP here for Clever Spanner. Uh, use this stratagem. Uh, use this stratagem uh, before the battle. Select one Ludas or Burna Boys unit from your army that contains nine or less models for one CP, or one Ludas or Burna, uh, Burna Boys unit from your army that contains ten or more models for two CP. Whilst the unit contains one or more spanners, you can roll one additional dice and discard any one. Uh, discard one when determining the number of shots for Burnas or death guns equipped on models in that unit. Each unit can only be selected for the stratagem once per battle. Um, I think that's pretty cool. At the beginning of the battle, you've got a big old Luda's squad, like a big old Luda bomb, and now you get to uh, roll two instead of one, so all those times that you would roll that one, I mean, you could still roll double ones. I mean, if you're me, you probably would. <laughs> but it gives you a better chance of not having done that, which is, which is I think, super cool. Uh, Dragon Knight, yeah, it does mean that he's guaranteed to live at least two turns. I think it's, I, I mean... You know, you'd be hard pressed to find an army, especially turn one, that would be able to take give him four wounds. Because technically, I guess you could do four wounds in the shooting phase, four wounds in the psychic phase, and four wounds in the um, in the fighting in the uh, fight phase. But I I think you're going to be very hard pressed to find any army that turn one is going to be able to do that. 
Um, I think that Gaskell, he's also got that four up in vol save. He's tough seven. So, I mean, for a lot of this to work, it's going to be very difficult. You know, I think that, um, I think that Grey Knights might have an ability to really take him down, but, um, I, I, you know, turn two, honestly, I don't think they're going to get him turn one for sure. Um, and him giving all those buffs, I think he's going to, I think he's going to do a lot of work, which is, I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, but seriously, I think that's I think that's a good point. It does make him live around, which is pretty cool. Uh, then you've got uh, one CP for a DeBernan Highway. Uh, use this strategy in your shooting phase when a custom boost a blaster unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Until the start of your next turn, change the characteristic of that unit's burner exhaust uh, to the, uh, as follows. Range 10 inches, assault 3, uh, strength 5, AP minus 1. So that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Because um, I think it's D3. It's basically like a flamer. Uh, usually, so now you've got uh, just assault three, which is pretty good. And you got one CP for flying Ed Butt. Um, use the stratagem in the end of your movement phase. Select one orc unit from your army that has the flyer battlefield roll. That model is reduced to zero wounds and automatically crashes and burns. Do not roll. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, I think that uh, this is going to be super effective with. Um, I think that's going to be super effective with what is it? It's the Bernabamas. The ones where they uh, they have the when they when they crash and burn they do three mortal wounds to all units within six inches. So if you shoot one of those guys up there uh, it, behind enemy lines, right in the middle of all of his stuff, you drop his the burner bomb on there, doing a bunch of mortal wounds from that, and then all of a sudden you just blow him up in the middle of the of your opponent's uh, space there. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. This is all under your control for one CP being able to drop all of those mortal wounds onto your opponent, which is awesome. I like that a lot. I think that's going to be... I mean, I, I think it's a legitimate uh, a legitimate um, tactic that you can use there to use that. I think that's going to be fun to be able to see that happening. Take a couple of them, and then you've got different turns that you can drop all those mortal wounds. I like it a lot. Uh, then we got one CP for full speed lads. Uh, use the stratagem in your charge phase after charging with an orc biker or death killer war trike unit from your army until the end of the phase. Um, until the end of the phase, add one to that unit's strength characteristic. So, um, man, that's pretty cool for bikers and death killer war trikes there to have a plus one to the strength characteristic, especially if they've got, you know, the claws. I think you got a lot of cool stuff that you can have going on there. Um,. And it's only one CP, so plus one strength to orc bikers or death killer war trikes for one CP. Heck yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, then you've got one CP for squig bombs. Use the strategy in your movement phase after uh, moving a blitz a bomber move uh, blitz a bomber model uh, from your army until the end of the phase. Add one to rolls made uh, for that model's uh, boom bomb ability. Um, then you got two CP for special shells. Use the strategy in your shooting phase when a flash gets unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. To the end of the phase, increase the range of the snaz guns models in that unit are equipped with by 12 inches. Ooh, two CP for tw extra 12 inches on range on the on the on the snaz guns. I like that a lot. Um, you got one CP for patch up. Use the strategy at the start of your of any turn. Select one Morkanot, Gorkanot, or stomp a unit from your army. To the end of the turn, that model is considered to have double the number of wounds remaining for the purposes of determining what row to use on his damage table. That's pretty good. That's super effective. Anytime that you see armies that have the ability to uh, double their wounds characteristic for 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 choosing where they are, uh, they I mean they do really well. Like it works well with knights. It works well with um, with iron hands with their stuff. So I think for one CP, I like that a lot, especially for Morkanot or Corkanot. Then for 2 CP, you've got Unstoppable Momentum. Use this stratagem in your charge phase when an orc unit from your army has finished a charge move and dealt one or more mortal wounds to an enemy unit. If that orc unit is no longer within one inch of an enemy unit, it can immediately be chosen to charge with again. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you run up there, do your, you know, um, just kind of like run up there, throw a bunch of, 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 of mortal wounds, and then you get to charge again so you're not like blowing yourself out of combat, which is pretty fun. Then for 1 CP, you've got Wildfire. Use this stratagem in your movement phase. After selecting an enemy unit from the burn -a -bomb, uh, uh, for the burn -a bombs ability of a burn -a -bomb, uh unit from your army, select one other enemy unit within 6 inches of that unit you selected. Uh, roll 1d6 for each model in that additional unit, up to a maximum of 10 dice. Uh, for each roll of a 5+, plus, that unit suffers one mortal wound. The strategy is not affected by the arsonist subculture. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so that's pretty cool. I like that ability. And that kind of goes again with the flying Ed Butt. So you fly in, 
drop the bomb, spend the one CP to hurt another unit with uh, on five plus doing mortal wounds, and then you blow them up doing three mortal wounds to all those units within six inches. I think, it, I, I mean, for two CP, I think that's a super effective just like punch to the face that's going to be uh, su uh, super good, especially against like uh, uh, armies that like to castle up. Um, then you've got one CP for Dreaded Death Machine. Use the stratagem at the fight phase when a Death Dread uh, unit from your army is chosen to fight with. Until the end of that phase, each time an enemy model is destroyed as a result of an attack made by that unit, you can immediately make an additional attack against the same target using the same weapon. These additional attacks cannot themselves generate any further attacks. Um, pretty good. I like that one. Extra attacks is pretty good. Uh, then you've got one CP for Hit Him Harder. Uh, use the stratagem in the fight phase when a Mega Nobs unit from your army is chosen to fight with. Till the end of the phase, add one to the damage characteristic of melee weapons modeling that unit are equipped with. That's pretty cool. I think that could be super fun. Having them sitting inside of like a Gorkonaut or a Morkonaut, drop out, charge in, and now they're doing extra damage. I like that a lot. So I like that one for 1 CP. Hit them harder is going to be good. Uh, so now let's go over the specialist mobs. So specialist mobs are essentially um, the... Um, are, are ways for you to, to make you can, you can choose each unit to take them uh, and it basically just turns their clan so almost like it's just like extra clans so you can't really uh, build your own per se uh, but these are just extra abilities for your, uh, specialty clans that you want to do so um, and they can be used uh, no matter what so if you have like two detachments and you want to have one be a specialist mob and you want one to be regular you can do it, but they just can't affect each other because it basically just turns all of the, the times when it says clan into that specific one. So, for example, if you were to include a war boss in your army and you decide he was a Tined, uh, his clan faction keyword is changed to Tined, and his breaking heads ability would say if a Tined unit fa uh, fails a morale test within three inches of a friendly Tined war boss. So, it basically just changes uh, all, the cha all the times into that. So, these are basically just turning them into... Um, it turns them all into uh, that that clan. Um, if your army is battleforged, all clan units from your orc detachment, excluding those in the super heavy auxiliary detachment, can gain a subculture instead of a clan culture, so long as every unit in that detachment is from the same specialist mob. Um, so you can you could have a mixed one if so. Say you had you made one whole um, detachment um, pyromaniacs, but you wanted another unit from a different a detachment to be able to be affected by some of the powers you wouldn't get the uh the specialty ability from it but you would be able to be affected so if you wanted them to be able to have say the, the war you wanted the war boss in that pyromaniacs thing to be able to to again like bash heads here um you can you could break in heads you can make say a, a grot unit from another detachment that and it would break up that um that detachment's abilities but you would you would be able to have them be swarping around i don't know why you would ever do it but you can that's what i'm trying to say i don't know why you would do it but you can if you wanted to um so let's go over what they have here so these are basically just new clan abilities uh what they've done here so you've got pyromaniacs who are uh they get the ability uh, arsonists uh you can reroll any and all of the dice when determining the number of shots made for burnas scorches Burna bottles, burna, burna exhausts, killer jets, and scorcha missiles equipped on models in a unit with this subculture. Uh, when resolving an attack made with the melee profile of a burna equipped on a model with this subculture, you can reroll the wound roll. When resolving the burna bombs ability for a unit with this subculture, add one to each roll. So that's pretty cool. I like that, uh, especially if you want to go uh, burna heavy, which could be pretty awesome you make a specialty detachment that just does that then you got hunters get uh sneaky devils infantry models only excluding gretchen whilst a model uh in a unit with this subculture is on or within a terrain feature it gains a five plus invul save when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in a unit with this subculture while that model or any model in the target unit is on or within a terrain feature improve the weapon's armor penetration characters by one for that attacks so if you wanted to run like a commando squad, uh, like a detachment of commandos that just did, you know, you wanted to just run a whole bunch of commandos doing stuff, they could get this ability and do like really, really good work there. Um, getting plus one uh, AP, um, having the five plus invul save. I like it a lot. Then you got uh, boom boys, blow it up. Uh, improve the strength and armor penetration characteristic 
of rocket and stick bomb weapons. These are, uh, are weapons that have the name rocket or stick bomb in the profile, e.g. rocket launcher, stick bomb, stick bomb chukka, uh, as well as tank buster bombs, miss, uh, wing missiles, cannons, kill cannons, tank, uh, def cannons, da boomer, and labas equipped on models in a unit with this subculture by one, e.g. AP minus two becomes AP minus three. Note, for combi weapons, the bonus only applies to attacks made with the rocket launcher profile. That's pretty fun. I think that could be super effective. Just throwing a whole bunch of extra AP out there. I like it a lot. Uh, then you've got Flyboys. Uh, they get Crucial Velocity. Uh, fly models only. Uh, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against a unit with this subculture by a model that is more than one inch away, that unit is treated as having the benefit of cover to its saving throw. Uh, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon against a unit with this subculture in a turn in which it was more than one inch away from any enemy units in this at the start of the preceding charge phase subtract one from the hit rolls so that's pretty cool um you know if you have a bunch of um oh, what is the jump pack guys my brain's completely gone blank on it uh, if you have the, the jump pack guys there they basically get the benefit of cover unless they're, until they're one inch away and then if you charged or they charged, then you get they're going to be at minus one to hit you. Pretty cool. I like that a lot. I think that's pretty fun. Um, and also getting the, the fly models only, uh, models only, if you have actual flyers in there, they'll benefit from the cover thing, like, you know, being more than one inch away, which is always fun. Uh, granted, you're probably not going to be, uh, the, no one's really going to be charging you, but I guess they, I guess if they do, if you have like a flying hive tyrant jumps up onto your back or you have like a... Um, a hell turkey that goes up there and tries to attack you, you they're going to be minus one to hit pretty cool i like that one then you got grot mobs uh cheeky zoggers gretchen models only models in a unit with this subculture gain six plus invulnerable save when resolving an attack by a vehicle model in a unit um what models in a unit with this subculture gain a six plus invulnerable save when resolving an attack by a vehicle model in a unit with this subculture re-roll a hit roll of one so all of a sudden now, I mean, they already put it out there, showed you how you can make like an entire army of, of grots, which is pretty awesome. But now all of a sudden, those grot tanks are going to be re-rolling hit rolls of one. I like it. I think it's really fun. I would love to see an all grot army just coming out there and just crushing things. Uh, then you got tin heads, crush and crump. Uh, you got kill it cans, Jeff dreads, mega armor, morkonauts. Gorkonauts and Stompas only. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in a unit with this subculture, add one to the hit roll. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. I think that could be super effective uh, if you just have a whole bunch of Killicans and Death Dreads just like cr like just crushing up the field there, getting plus one to hit. Same thing with you know Stompas and Morkonauts and uh, Gorkonauts. I like that a lot. Then you got Feral Orcs, gets the Wild Boys. War boss, weird boy, knobs, and boys only, excluding biker and mega armor. Models in a unit with this subculture can pile in up to six inches. Ooh, that's pretty good. When making an advanced roll for a unit with this subculture, roll two additional dice and discard two of the results. That's pretty fun. If you're advancing, you're rolling three dice, choosing the highest to, to get them up there. And then if they've got the war boss there, they're going to charge as well with it. I like it a lot. I think this is going to be super fun to run them up there if you got regular guys. Then you got Mad Boys Frantic, uh, infantry and biker units only, excluding Gretchen. At the start of each battle round, roll 1d3 and consult the table below to establish what effect applies to units with this subculture until the end of the battle round. Uh, this roll cannot be re-rolled. Uh, 1. Uh, Moronics, when resolving an attack that targets a unit with this subculture, add 1 to the saving throw. Invulnerable saving throws are unaffected. So plus 1 to armor um, if they're being attacked, which is pretty cool. Nuttas, uh, units with this uh, with this uh, subculture automatically pass morale tests. Also pretty good. And then frenzies add one to the strength characteristic of models in this unit with the subculture. So that's kind of fun. A little bit more uh, very orky, where you don't know what you're going to be doing, and you uh, you know a lot of randomness going on there with the Mad Boys, which makes sense for Mad Boys being like that. Uh, but I like that. I think all of those, all three of them are, are, are can be super effective there. So I like it. I think it'd be good. I think it'd be fun. Let's go over the custom jobs now. So custom jobs are essentially like the um, uh, the tank ace abilities from the uh, that the, the, the um, Imperial Guard got here. Uh, so if your army includes one or more mech boys, mech boy workshop units, 
you can give one of the following custom jobs to an orc unit from your army. In addition, you can take custom jobs by using the custom job stratagem. Um, all of the custom jobs you have included must be different and be given to different units. Uh, note that some custom jobs are weapons that replace one, models existing weapons, all the fun stuff. So basically, if you have a mech boy workshop, you get a free custom job. But you can also spend the CP on the stratagem to allow you to do a custom job on your on them as well. So, um, so squig hide tires here. You have speed freaks, excluding named characters and units that can fly. Battle wagon, um, gun wagon, bone breaker, or truck unit only. Add two inches to the unit's move characteristic. That's pretty fun. I, I you know, plus two inches is always a good thing to have there. Um, then you have souped up special, uh, boom deck snaz wagon unit only. Souped up special uh, replaces the unit's mech special and has the following profile. Uh, range 30 inches, assault 15, strength 4, AP minus 1, 1 damage. Not bad. Uh, then you got gyroscopic whirly gig, um, shock jump dragster unit only. You can use this unit's uh, shock tunnel ability when advancing, even if you did not roll a 4+. plus. In addition, this unit does not suffer any mortal wounds as a result of the shock tunnel ability. So that's kind of fun. You have a shock jump dragster just jumping all over the table, left and right, um, just moving along, being baller i think that could be fun um then you got sizzly uh sizzly rivets custom boost a blaster unit only when resolving an attack made with a rivet cannon by a model in this unit an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any other damage uh pretty good six is doing mortal wounds is always fun with the with that uh with that uh the boost of blaster then you got uh corkscrew uh megatrack scrap jet unit only uh, the first time this unit finishes a consolidation move in each fight phase, it can immediately fight again. Ooh, that's pretty fun. So it consolidates and so it fights, it charges in, fights, consolidates, fights again, and then would consolidate again. Uh, wouldn't be able to fight again, I guess, but at that point you've had two rounds of attacking before your opponent can attack at all. So I like that one a lot. Uh, Nitro powered squigs, uh, ruck -a truck squig buggy unit only. When resolving an attack made by this unit, uh, unit squig launcher or heavy squig launcher, add one to the wound roll. Not bad. Add one to wound rolls is always fun. Gork's Roar, Death Killer War Trike, model only. Add four inches to the range characteristic of the model's kill a jet and change the type characteristic of its burn up profile to assault six. Ooh, that's pretty fun. So plus four inches to the range and becomes assault six as opposed to D6. Not bad. I like that a lot. Uh, the Boomer, uh, Battle Wagon, Bone Breaker, or Gun Wagon model with a Kill Cannon only. The Boomer replaced the Kill Cannon with the following. Uh, heavy Range 36, Heavy 2D6, Strength 8, AP minus 2, 2 damage. Pretty good. All of a sudden becomes a uh, super uh, battle cannon. It becomes a, uh, a battle cannon that hasn't moved and gets grinding assault. I like that a lot. Uh, you got Zag Zap. Battle Wagon, Bone Breaker, or Gun uh, Wagon model with a Zap Gun only. Uh, zap Zap replaces a Zap Gun uh, and has the following profile. Uh, range 36 inches, Heavy 1, Strength 2d6, uh, AP minus 3, 3 damage. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, do not make a hit roll. It automatically scores a hit before firing this weapon. Roll to determine the strength of the shot. If the result is 9+, plus, do not make a wound roll. Inflict 3 mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends pretty good i like that one a lot i think that could be super fun and super effective uh then you've got fortress uh battle wagon bone breaker or gun wagon model only the model has a save characteristic of three plus and a five plus invulnerable save not bad i like that uh pincha model with a grab and claw only pincha replaces the model's grab and claw and has the following profile uh, uh, strength plus one ap minus three d6 damage each time this bear uh, fights, he can only make a single attack with his weapon. When resolving an attack made with his weapon, add three to the hit roll if the target is a vehicle or monster. That's pretty fun. I like that one a lot. Um, then you've got Red Rolla, uh, Bone Breaker model only. Replace the model's Bone Breaker Ram ability with the following. Red Rolla, uh, when this model makes a charge move, add six to its attack characteristics until the end of the turn. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, then you've got Orchimatic Pistons. Killicans, Death Dreads, Morkonaut, or Gorkonaut unit only. Add three inches to the unit's move characteristic and can re-roll advanced rolls made for the unit. Uh, that's pretty fun. I like that one a lot. You can have a uh, you can have a uh, Killicans unit that just 
keeps shooting up the board. Uh, Sparkly Bits, Killicans, Death Dreads, Morkonaut, or Gorkonaut unit only. Improve the unit's ballistic skill characteristic by one. That's pretty good. That could be super effective, especially with a, a shooty um, a shooty one. Um, I mean, obviously with a shooty one, but I mean, you can actually make a make an effective shooty one, which is kind of cool. Uh, Dirty Gubbins, Killican, or Death Dreads unit only. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against this unit, subtract one from the hit rolls. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Slug Gubbin, uh, Gorkonaut model only. Slug Gubbin replaces the model's Death Storm Mega Shooter and has the following profile. Uh, Slug Gubbin has range 36, heavy 24, strength 6, AP minus 1, 1 damage. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, if the target uh, was within 12 inches when the bearer was chosen to shoot with, add 1 to the hit rolls. That's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. I like that one. And then uh, Gog Claw. Gorkonaut or Morkonaut model only. When rolling to determine the damage characteristic of the uh, crush profile of the bearer's claw or uh, claw of Gork or possibly Mork, uh, rolls of less than 4 count as 4. So that's pretty fun. So you're doing D6 damage, minimum of 4. Woof. I like that. And then Blitz a Gatler. Uh, Stompa only. The model Super Gatla has a uh, has a damage characteristic of two. In addition, when rolling for the weapons, uh, weapons Psycho Daka Blasta ability, you can re-roll the D6 once per phase. Ooh, that's fun. So to keep them shooting, you can keep you can keep doing it and you have a free re-roll as you're going along with it. That's pretty cool. I like that one. Uh, then you've got clan specific psychic powers. Uh, so if you uh, all clan psyker models uh, can know the psychic power of their respective clan instead of generating a uh, psychic power from the power of the wad discipline uh, a clan psyker can instead know the appropriate clan psychic power of the list below uh, so goths have bull charge bull charge is a warp charge value of six if manifested select one friendly goth unit within 18 inches of this psyker to the end of the turn charge distances of less than seven inches rolled for that unit after modifiers count as seven inches so if you have a charge of seven inches you can auto charge which is awesome i like that one a lot um which is pretty cool yeah i like that one uh and it's after modifiers count as seven inches so if you needed a seven inch charge and you rolled and after modifiers it didn't it you know so you have uh so say you rolled a nine and you or say so you need a seven inches right say you rolled an eight but you were charging into like a repulsor which is minus two to to the charge distance all of a sudden now that charge counts as a seven and you can get in because the eight would have become a six but now it becomes a seven because of this ability so i like that a lot um and especially goths now that are going to be pretty popular with gasgill thraka running around on the table uh then you got death skulls maniacal seizure uh maniacal seizure is a warp charge value of seven if manifests it's like one enemy unit within 18 inches of the psyker until the start of your next psychic phase, when resolving an attack made by that unit, subtract one from the hit roll. And when resolving an attack made by a friendly Death Skulls model against this against that unit, improve the armor penetration characteristic of the weapon by one for that attack. So, uh, manifest one enemy unit uh, until the start of your next psychic phase. When resolving an attack made by uh, made uh, by that unit, subtract one from the hit roll. And result in an attack made by a friendly death skull model against that unit and probe them. Okay, so they're gonna be they're gonna be minus one to hit, and you're gonna have plus one AP when you attack them, which is pretty cool. And it just says uh, uh, resolving an attack made, so it doesn't say during the fight phase. Uh, so it could be shooting and fighting, which is pretty great. Um, bad moons you have gleaming Cle gleaming gear. Gleaming gear has a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one friendly Bad Moons unit within 18 inches of this Psyker. Uh, until the start of your next Psychic phase, when resolving an attack made against that unit, add one to the saving throw. Invulnerable saving throws are unaffected. So plus one saving throw, which is pretty good. Um, plus one to your armor, essentially. So it basically means you're in cover. Although if you're in cover, you'll have an additional plus one, which is pretty cool. And then you have Snake Bites Constriction. Uh, Constriction has a warp charge value of 6. If manifest, it's like one enemy unit within 12 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, have the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, have the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. So you can basically just um, just really, really hurt an enemy unit that you know is going to be coming into you. So if they're going to be charging into you with you know, with like a death company or if they're going to charge into you with Wolfen or if they're going to charge into you with like Deathwing Knights, you cast that on that and now they're going to have, um, 
uh, have the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. So they'll still get the plus one, they'll still get all that, but, uh, you know, I still think it's pretty good. Um, then you've got uh, Evil Suns, Visions of the in the Smoke. Uh, has a warp charge value of six. If manifests, it's like one friendly Evil Suns vehicle unit within 12 inches of this Psyker. You can only select a unit with a wounds characteristic of 18 or more if the result of the psychic test uh, to manifest the psychic power was a nine or more. So it's a warp charge value of six, but you need a nine or more to select a vehicle that has a wounds characteristic of 18 or more. So if you want to select a Stompa, for instance, you're going to need to have rolled a nine on it. Till the start of your next psychic phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit, you can reroll the hit roll. Ooh, reroll and hit rolls. That's pretty good. Um, and it doesn't say failed hit rolls, so it's reroll hit rolls. So you can reroll uh, with the modifiers uh, after modifiers, which is pretty cool. It's the new way of saying the rerolls. So I like that one a lot. Um, and if you if you manage to roll that nine, I mean it's not hard to get that nine if you've got you know if you've got a whole bunch of uh, of bodies around you there and you're getting pluses to your roll. I like that one a lot. Um, then you've got blood axes, clever talk. Uh, clever talk has a warp charge value of six. If manifests, it's like one enemy unit visible to this psyker. Until the start of your next psychic phase, that unit cannot fire Overwatch at Blood Axe units from your army, and cannot be chosen to fight until all ed eligible Blood Axe units from your army have done so. Uh, so it's specifically Blood Axe, so if you've got mixed army, so if you've got, say, a specialty detachment, or if you've got um, or not a specialist mob, um, if you've got something like that, they wouldn't get the benefit of this, and it would only be against the, uh, the, the Blood Axes. But you could charge in with blood axes and then make sure that your other units get to attack. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and if it's the second round and you've got a blood axe unit that's already engaged in combat, then you could just hold them to last and allow everyone else to attack before them. So pretty good. And then you got Free Buddha's Jolly Orcs Glare. Jolly Orcs Glare has a warp charge value of 6. If manifest, it's like one enemy unit within 18 inches of this Psyker. Uh, until the start of your next psychic phase, have the move characteristic of models in that unit and subtract one from advance and charge rolls made for it. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's basically like the, um, it's almost like the, the what is it, the, the Thunderfire cannons have the, the tremor shells uh, just locking down a unit. So if you've got like a Dark Angels squad, a big old unit of, of, um, of uh, Deathwing Knights that are coming at you, you can just pop that down there. Suddenly their move is now three inches. Um, which is pretty pretty brutal, and then they're at minus one from advance and charge rolls. It becomes really easy to keep them out there. Or even if you've got it against like a like a uh, a biker unit, all of a sudden instead of moving their fourteen inches, all of a sudden now they're moving seven inches. That makes a big difference. You know they can't get out and get where they need to for what they're going to be planning for. So I like that one. I like that one a lot. And now we've got the orcs name generator. So I am going to go with uh, Tuska Flame Spitta. Yes, that is what I like. <laughs> so, pretty cool stuff. I um, I think they're super effective things that they've got going on here. I like a lot of what they've got. I like a lot of what they have uh, for both armies. Uh, Spect, I do believe that uh, you're right. I think having plus one to save for orcs is much needed. And they've got the, a, couple, a couple of ways to get that ability in here. So, I think that the for the orcs, uh, they gave them the ability to stick around longer. And I think they gave them the ability to hit stronger. Which is the two things that you want from orcs. So hitting stronger and uh, sticking around longer is exactly what you need for them, and I think that's going to be uh, super effective. So I like I think that the rules that the orcs got in their um, in this are, are going to be super super strong and super effective for them. Um, I think that the space wolves also got some pretty incredible uh, abilities in this book, and I think both sides are going to be very happy with what you got. I think thunder wolf cavalry are going to be a beast to handle. I think that. Um, that uh, the Wolfen are going to be a beast to handle, um, which is appropriate now that the beast is around. <laughs> so I think it's going to be fun to see uh, these going there. I think Ragnar is going to be just a, a shredder, man. I think he's going to be getting in there and just like ripping things apart. I think that's going to be awesome to see that. And I think Gazgul Thraka is going to do the same thing. So it'll be fun to see the two of them on the table uh, just beating each other up. So, uh, again, continuing with the Psychic Awakening being some pretty strong stuff, pretty strong abilities, but not game-breaking, which is exactly what, I mean, that's exactly what I want to see. Uh, I would imagine that's what most people want to see. So, awesome stuff, and I'm really glad. Uh, let me know, though, uh, if you if you like this, if you liked uh, the live stream version of it, 
Um, uh, I know it kind of came as a last minute thing that I just decided to do. Uh, honestly, it's partly because I'm uh, going a little stir crazy being locked in here and I thought I would try a little uh, live streaming uh, <laughs> with everything that's going on. So uh, hello, a deck of flame, uh, deck of flack of flame. Um, but yes, I, uh, I think, I think it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. And I think that there's some really cool abilities that I think both, um, my, uh, my, my, my wolfy friends and my orky friends are going to enjoy, uh, for sure. So, uh, but let me know if you like the live stream version of it. Let me know if you would rather it just go back to, uh, just doing a video and, uh, which one works best for you. So, uh, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. Uh, I uh, hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I hope that you are, uh, got a lot of information for this, and I hope you're all staying safe out there. Uh, so until next time, keep six inches away, uh, six feet away, and have fun.